on Tech on Tech, we tell you how legal meets tech. Our application is called Legal Tech Services. It's a web-based application, and uh, what it does is allow for the exchange of legal services. In tech news, e-insurance startup bags 1.2 billion in Series A drive, and internationally, Elon Musk presents Optimus. This is a humanoid robot. More details in our Tech News Roundup. Join me, Stephanie Ayeta, and Grace Gedaga as we serve you with only the best tech updates the world over. Take on Tech every Monday at 10.30 p.m. on KBC Channel 1. Stay tuned. The 5th Kenya International Industrial Expo is happening at the Sarit Expo Center from 3rd to 5th November 2022. Over 100 Chinese manufacturers will participate with building materials, engineering machinery, vehicles and auto parts, consumer goods and much more. Come network as we boost Kenya's manufacturing capacity. Entry is free. Are you the contractor of Fundi of the Year? Well, the Construction Excellence Awards is an initiative by the National Construction Authority to acknowledge and recognize the outstanding contributions of contractors, site supervisors and construction workers in the industry. What do you need to apply? Requirements for the nomination of contractors, identification card of the principal director, valid NCA registration certificate and practicing license, valid tax compliance certificate. Requirements for the construction skilled workers and site supervisors, identification card, valid accreditation card. Not only can you apply, but you can also nominate a contractor or fundi who qualifies. Email your application nomination to CEA2022 at nca.go.ke or drop off at NCA headquarters on the 12th floor of KCB Towers, Upper Hill, Nairobi by 31st October 2022 at 5 p.m. Application or nomination forms are available at the NCA website. Visit www.nca.go.ke forward slash application dash process to apply. Winners will receive cash and other prizes. Construction Excellence Awards, proudly brought to you by the National Construction Authority. Ili kupata skiza tune hii ya jogging, joking kwa simu yako, bonyeza star 811, star 758 hash. Good morning class. Good morning Mr. Kipto. Now I want you to write a composition using the word jogging. Teacher, please give us spelling for the word jogging. Sita sema jog ile ya uchog ile ile jog ya kunyongwa. Habana, nina sema jog jog i jogging. Sita sema jog ile nje unasema jog ya kuhu. Kimbia ya maraton Ama ile chogi ingine ile chogi ya, ya television ya kuchega Haa ha, Sita zema yo chogi Na maanisa chogi ingi chogi ingi chogi ingi Yopre ile kukimbisa hili Chonga moto Taita composition using the word chogi Ili kupata skiza tune hii bonyeza Star 811 Star 758 hash Star 811 Star 758 hash The legends and familiar chants will grace KBC once again.
It's 20 days to go to the FIFA World Cup 2022 that will take place in Qatar. KBC, remember, will be exclusively covering those matches. We have the free-to-air rights. Good evening and welcome to KBC Prime Edition. Coming to you right here in broadcasting as in the capital city, Nairobi, Kenya. My name is Tom Boya. Our top stories tonight. Seeking solutions, President William Ruto urges IPOA to deal with extrajudicial killings. Was it a case of negligence? Senate probes the death of baby Travis at Kenyatta National Hospital. Plus, a tough time for Kenya. Inflation hits 9.6% in an all-time high in five years. Well, a little later on on this live broadcast, we are hosting Sister Frida Adongo, a principal and an educationist. The topic to discuss tonight is the CBC double transitions and the challenges that learners and teachers as well uh, are facing. If you have any questions or your comments, you can send in our socials at KBC Channel 1, my Twitter handle at Tomboya24. Susan Fuko is in charge of our sign language docket. Let's go straight to our top story tonight. President Ruto William has directed the Independent Police Oversight Authority to furnish the Ministry of Interior in coordination with a roadmap on how to deal with extrajudicial killings. Ruto, who had a couple of separate meetings at State House Nairobi Monday, says the authority is better place to put a mechanism to stop such killings. Irene Mushuma opens our coverage tonight with that report. President William Ruto wants firm action taken against persons behind extrajudicial killings in the country. In a meeting with IPOA top leadership Monday, the president sought to have the commission furnishes government with a detailed report on killings in the country. The latest killing by police was that of a Pakistan journalist who was shot dead in Kajedo County under unclear circumstances. Also under investigation is how two Indians and their Kenyan taxi driver were abducted and killed by police claimed to be security officers and their bodies dumped in Abadea Forest. Over 10 officers from the now disbanded Special Services Units have been arrested in connection with the death of the three and are already in court. Early in the day, the head of state held talks with a U.S. delegation on mechanisms to boost trade between Nairobi and Washington. The president said the country has a huge potential to export, among others, clothing products, tea and coffee to the United States. Irene Mchuma Odim, the Prime Edition. Public Service Gender and Affirmative Action Cabinet Secretary Aisha Juma says there is need to review upwards the salaries for public servants to help them deal with the current economic challenges. Speaking when she toured the Huduma Center headquarters to access services, Juma noted that most public servants are demoralized due to their meager earnings amid the harsh economic times, adding that she will initiate talks to have their pay raised. The CS dismissed reports that the service is bloated. Kamche Meza is on that story. On her third day in office, a public service, gender and affirmative action, Cabinet Secretary Aisha Jumwa, accompanied by Principal Secretary Mary Kimonye, spent the better part of the day touring the Huduma Center headquarters in Nairobi. <laughs> Jumwa engaged various members of the public and staff in what she termed as a meet and greet as well as a familiarization tour. It is here that she dismissed claims that the public service is bloated and promised an upward review of salaries. The public service who is um, actually demoralized in matters salary and uh, all other uh, most of the benefits so I think uh, in my 100 days uh, in office, uh, I will initiate the, the plan in actually uh, increasing the salaries of, uh, of the public uh, servants. 
At the same time, the ministry is seeking to improve services at the 52 Huduma centers across the country in the next 100 days. 18 Huduma centers, including the one at the headquarters, will have their working hours extended from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The ministry has already commenced extended working hours on shift basis for the government-owned Huduma Center. Right here we have a backlog of 33,000 3, uncollected IDs. So we just ask the Wanaichi to come and collect the IDs. And we have about 3,000 birth certificates not collected. We also have the smart licenses not collected. The initiatives seek to enhance convenience in accessing services. Kamchemenza for Prime Edition. Medics at Kenyatta National Hospital are on the spot for alleged negligence that caused the death of a two-year-old boy who had a folk jembe lodged in his head. The mother of the boy narrated to the Senate Health Committee how medics at the biggest referral hospital kept the boy waiting for 17 hours with a folk jembe in his head because they could not pay 20,000 shillings. Nishuki Washira reports. The Senate Health Committee commenced investigations into the circumstances leading to the death of a two-year-old boy who had a folk jembe lodged in his head that occurred at Kenyatta National Hospital. The committee hearing a first-hand account of the mother of the young boy as they arrived at the state facility. Overwhelmed by emotions, the mother, Judy Modoni, was unable to narrate and was assisted by her sister, Lucy Wamboi. According to Lucy, they first sought help at a nearby chemist before proceeding to the Caliver 5 hospital where the medics only took a scan before referring the boy to Kenyatta National Hospital. Mimi naona haya yote yamesababika sababu ya dhika level 5. Sababu level 5 hospitali kuu inatakiwa iwe na ICU. Level 5 inatakiwa ikuwe na neurosurgeon. Level 5 lazima ikuwe na madaktari wa kuu. The three arrived at the Rifaro Hospital at around 6 p.m. and after paying 1,200 shillings for registration, they were kept waiting until 10 p.m. when the first medic came to tell them to pay 20,000 shillings for the boy to be attended. <laughs> With no money to pay, the mother was left holding his two-year-old son with a folk jembe in his head for the rest of the night. The emotional sisters narrated to the senators how they spent the night seated on plastic chairs watching as the young boy succumbed to pain, thirst and hunger. Evelyn Ogendo, a government psychiatrist who has been counseling the bereaved mother, wants the government to look at service delivery in public health facilities, terming them wanting. Medics were of different departments. One of our good come at seven, you can to the woman in Kuna mambo nyingi sana iko pale kwanza mtoto wangu ni mgonjwa na ogopa kama mtoto atapona ama hatapona labda sina hela kwa wenyewe wanafaa kuwe wawe wawe sunuru kidogo Kisho kiwashira prime edition deeply disturbing report there may god almighty give that family peace and strength now health cabinet secretary susan nakumicha wafura has promised to address the acting syndrome at the Ministry of Health. Nakuchima, while officially taking over office, noted that most heads of departments 
are in acting capacity, some even for decades. She further promised to work with the staff to enhance the continuity of health services from her predecessor, Mutai Kagwe. Transitions. This has been one of the best uh, transitions from government to another. And, and I really think that uh, President Ruto has done a very good job of uh, the transition process uh, so that we can be continuity. So, Madam, I want to hand you over this officially. Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nahumicha has officially taken over office at the Ministry of Health. <laughs> Nahumicha committing to enhance healthcare service delivery to each and every Kenyan while lauding her predecessor Mutai Kagwe for his achievements during his time. Uh, this place was full of vehicles, old vehicles, um, uh, madam, that were lying around all over the place. Uh, Wi-Fi systems and electronic and ICT structures. I want to, to particularly remember the COVID, the COVID period. I'm not sure what version of uh, Afia House this is going to be, but of course a new version. And uh, many of you have asked whether I will fit in uh, Senator Mutai Kagwe's shoes. Obviously no. I'm sure his shoe size could be 42 or something. <laughs> there about. While being introduced to the staff of the Ministry of Health, the new CS wondered why many heads were on acting terms. We look forward to ensuring that uh, people are rightfully placed and we are rightfully working together to achieve the objectives that we have been given. The new CS vowed to streamline the ministry to respond to the changing dynamics. Irene Mchuma Udim, the Prime Edition. Now the new Defence Cabinet Secretary Adan Duale has pledged to welfare, to, to support the welfare of the Kenya Defense Forces and petition the National Treasury to increase budgetary allocations to the ministry. Duale says additional funding for the ministry will equip the men and women in uniform to better maintain the territorial integrity of the country. The former Garissa Township Member of Parliament spoke at Ulinzi House right here in Nairobi after taking over reins of that ministry from his predecessor, Eugene Wamalwa. Kenya Defense Forces Headquarters at Lindsay House, Nairobi. Immediate former Defense Cabinet Secretary Eugene Wamalo and his successor Adan Duale signing the ministerial handover report in this change of guard formality. We want to celebrate KDF as being not just the institution that leads in ensuring the territorial integrity of Kenya, but also the institution that is helping civilian authorities especially this time of drought. As we speak, KDF is contributing greatly towards alleviating the drought situation facing uh, particularly the northern part of Kenya. In his speech, Wamalo congratulated Duale on his appointment even as he looked back at his one year plus tenure at the ministry. Also in manufacturing, as you know, we have a shipyard. As Kenya, we are able to manufacture our own ships and it's a great a stride we have made in manufacturing and industrialization of our country. The new cabinet secretary, while thanking his predecessor, set out five clear priorities. Among them is ensuring the Kenya Defense Forces is well funded by the National Treasury. We pay special attention towards improving the welfare and the well-being of the KDF fraternity. And this is in terms of their condition of service, their housing, their medical schemes, and of course, ask Parliament for more budgetary allocation and approval. Later, Duale was introduced to staff at Lindsay House before being hosted at a luncheon that was also a send-off for his predecessor, Eugene Wamalua. He's so far reporting for Prime Edition. Well, that story brings us to our first break right here on KBC Prime. Remember, a little later on in the bulletin, we'll be hosting Sister Frida Adongo, an educationist, to discuss the CBC, the double transitions that uh, uh, will take place, um, will occur early next year, and perhaps what challenges uh, that uh, teachers and also the learners are experiencing as as we, we, we go through the CBC in the formative stages. So we're taking a short break. We'll be back to stay with us.
Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124. Akili sio sila bolsano si stress we si digress kuom diverse what's up beautiful people my name is Willie Oeba and you're watching Grapevine The Black and White Affair is an elevated consumer experience centered on three pillars food music and fashion now that was a brilliant way to piga asherehe out of Nairobi <laughs> Mama Thea's Fenagitu also graced the stage, taking the vibe to a whole nother level. There is no experience that beats live performances and Mufasa the poet brought a different kind of vibe to the stage. I left out every time I have performed proof that I cannot always be grounded. The boy band's chemistry on stage is unmatched and all they give is immaculate vibes. For the moment in his life, all force, all will, Now for the Netherlands, saved by Romero. And so, Maxi Rodriguez, who scored in Argentina's last World Cup penalty shootout eight years ago in Berlin. It's in, and Argentina are real bound. The South American World Cup has a South American finalist after all. The American arm must roll out its red carpet for its most rivalrous visitors of all. At KBC Channel One, we put people at the heart of events with our captivating weekly news features. Every day, we are breaking new grounds with informative, entertaining, and inspiring human interest stories. On Mondays, 9 p.m., we have The Cabinet. Tuesday, 9 p.m., we get inside the barracks for military tales. We delve in the world of cinemas and theater each Wednesday night. For the young and industrious, make a date with us every Thursday at 9 p.m. Fridays are dedicated for my culture. On Saturdays, we go back in time for history in perspective. And on Sundays, we get to know the process of how things are done and made. KBC Channel One News features a whole lot of wonderful viewing experience. Welcome back. Now, the government has received 280 million shillings from the private sector, which will boost the drought response kitty. Deputy President Rigave Gashagwa, while receiving the contribution, said that government urgently needs 2 billion shillings to support the ongoing mitigation efforts and urged the corporate sector to be more generous. Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa, while acknowledging the contributions the corporate sector had already made, noted that the government required more to effectively battle drought that is ravaging parts of the country. Kenyans are becoming helpless and I call upon you, please, to dig a little bit deeper in your pockets and see what you can do so that we have a concerted effort to make sure that no Kenyan, 
not a single Kenyan dies from hunger. The Deputy President Rigavi, however, noted that the government is working on long-term solutions to the cyclic droughts. My boss, the President, has tasked me with the responsibility of coordinating the national government, the counter government, the development partners, the humanitarian agencies, and the private sector to look for urgent resources and coordinate distribution of food and set the stage for long-term and sustainable interventions in view of the adverse effects of the climate change. The prolonged drought has affected over 4 million Kenyans with the government distributing tons of relief food to severely affected families in some of the counties. Elsewhere, 1,600 households in Narok East sub-county are set to benefit from a 6,000 shilling monthly cash transfer and 8,050 kgs bags of pallet to mitigate the effects of the ongoing drought in the area. Joyce Keshe, the county executive committee member in charge of agriculture and livestock said the money will be given to the selected homesteads that have been severely affected by drought. We are giving unconditional cash to the most vulnerable families. That is, it will cover 1,600 households and the amounts are 6,000 per household. They, they, they already selected 1,600 households will each benefit uh, of 12,000 Chilling. Jacqueline Masharia for Prime Edition. Let's move into the corridors of justice now. Three suspects have been released on a bond of one million shillings each after they denied nine counts of conspiracy to defraud members of the public that they were in a position to acquire the 2022 Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education Examination papers. The trio were also charged with unlawful possession of identity cards belonging to different people without authority. Kevin Mogaka, Francis Manyara and Bravin Osano were paraded before Chief Magistrate Wendy Moshemi. The three university students were each ordered to pay a cash bill of 500,000 shillings. Each accused person is given a bond of one million shillings with one surety of a similar amount or a cash bill of 500,000 with two contact persons, copies of all statements and documents that will be used by the state to be availed to the defense. They were accused that between October 1st and October 20th, 2022, they ran a web-based syndicate that was fleecing Kenyans on claims they have leakage for the 2022 Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education examination. The prosecution told the court that the suspects were also found in possession of identity cards belonging to different people which they could not account for. The case will be mentioned on October the 14th, 2022, when a pre-trial date will be set. Meanwhile, the 60 million shillings land fraud case facing former Kipipiri Member of Parliament Amos Kimunya and two others failed to kick off on Monday as scheduled because one of the accused persons did not have legal representation. Senior Principal Magistrate Peter Aoko also summoned the law firm that was representing Midlands Limited, a private company implicated in the case. Kimunya and his co-accused Lilian Wangiri Njenga and Juhanke Wainaina appeared before the anti-corruption court after the High Court reinstated the charges last week. The three were freed two years ago for lack of evidence, but High Court Judge Esther Maina overturned the decision saying the trial magistrate erred as they should have been placed on their defense. It is alleged that the three used their offices to allocate 25 acres of public land then valued at 60 million shillings to Midlands Limited. For Prime Edition, I'm Ben Troenjoy. Now, farmers in Marafa area in Kilifi County have been trained to use adaptive planning through micro-irrigation to have a guaranteed round-the-year farming. This in search of a lasting solution to perennial drought in the county of Kilifi. And as Ruth Wamboi now tells us in this second and final part, of her report drought and mitigation farmers here are smiling all the way to the bank thanks to smart agriculture
from the Suri state of Ganse we head to Magarini constituency in this village Karimboni. The situation here is mesmerizing with green vegetation. At Mikuyuni village Ushindi group of women are busy in their shamba. <laughs> Janet Chancera, the chair lady, says rain-fed agriculture has terribly failed in this region with the last drop of rain having been witnessed in 2020. Mabadiliko ya hali anga. Sasa ikawa tukipanda hatupati, tukendelea hivyo hivyo, kawa sasa hali ni ngumu hata watoto kuenda shuleni wakawa hawaendi. The women say smart farming agriculture training has saved them from the effects of climate change that has hit Kilifi County. Onions, peppers, maize, tomatoes are doing well. Dripu ukiweka on tanki likijaa, uona enda kufanya shuli zako, hutumui muda wako pale. Ukifika hapo unaona tu nyevu, yani nyevu hauishi na umeona kwa haraka sana. Bohons have come in handy for drip irrigation. As water scarcity continue taking a toll on agriculture in many parts of this county. In this homestead, we meet members of Tupendane Women Group. Today, they are de-husking maize after a bumper harvest. This is the first time we have a lot of water, a lot of water, a lot of water, a lot of water, a lot of water. Lakini hizo sahihi wakati kama kuna nyesha nyesha huwa tunapanda mahindi kwa sababu kitu kama tomato na kuhii mabadiliko ya hali ya nini huwa zina shida. Kwa hivyo kama ni wakati wa kwa wengine mara nyingine kuna nyesha anga haieleweki huwa tunapanda mahindi. Sasa kama sahihi tumepanda mahindi na tumevuna tumeshukuru tunashukuru Mungu tumevuna. <laughs> The chair lady Zawadi John urges more people to venture into farming since it's beneficial to their families and the community at large. Kufikia sasa hatujafikiria kuacha kulima hakuna tunataka tunaendelea kulima kwa sababu mwanzo tulikuwa tunalima wenyewe lakini saa hii kuna watu pia wana wanapata ajira mtu akija asubuhi anafanya kazi anatoka anapata anapata pesa na mara nyingine anapata hata kama ni mboga but what has the ministry of agriculture in Kilifi county done to help farmers we do farmer sensitization on the effects of climate change then we train them on good agricultural practices so that farmers can utilize their farms uh, using the correct methods of farming thirdly we also caution farmers or we also advise our farmers to take crop insurance again. According to Larry Mwendo, a project officer with World Vision in Marafa, the drip irrigation is one of the many interventions they have employed to curb the adverse weather patterns. And as the world heads to COP27 in Egypt next month, Africa is unified with the goal to secure accountability for climate justice. Mapato yake ni mazuri. Hapo unakula, unasomesha, kisha unapata haka kitu kidogo. Kaku... <laughs> With 23 counties having been listed as drought-heated counties, residents here are reaping big from farming. Reporting for KBC from Karimboni, Kilifi County, I'm Ruth Wamboy. On Tech on Tech, we tell you how legal meets tech. Well, our application is called Legal Tech Services. It's a web based application, and uh, what it does is allow for the exchange of legal services. In tech news, e insurance startup bags 1.2 billion in Series A drive, and internationally, Elon Musk presents Optimus. This is a humanoid robot. More details in our Tech News Roundup. Join me, Stephanie Ayete and Grace Gedaiga as we serve you with only the best tech updates 
the world over. Take on Tech every Monday at 10.30 p.m. on KBC Channel 1. Stay tuned. Let's take a look at today's uh, business news with me, Wairimu Jenga. Now, Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa says the Kenya Kwanzaa administration has structured government programs towards creating jobs for the youth. Speaking during the launch of the Kenya Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Accelerator Program at the Nairobi Hotel, Gashagwa said President William Ruto had placed the youth at the center of his government and would ensure their needs are addressed. Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa says the Kenya Kwanzaa administration will be youth-oriented, promising to ensure more jobs are created for them. The Deputy President says the government will smoothen the path for the private sector to expand initiatives meant to deal with unemployment. The policy of the Ruto administration is less and less government in people's lives and more and more services to the people of Kenya. That is a policy. He was speaking during the launch of the Kenya Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Accelerator Program, which is sponsored by the Kenya Private Sector Alliance to create at least one million jobs annually over the next five years within the private sector. The idea of the Kenya Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Program is to unlock the potential of the SMEs, which are mostly young people, through tailored support services that allow them to grow and create jobs. For young people. He challenged companies to ensure they widened their boardrooms to accommodate young people, saying it is one way to mentor them as they prepare to serve in bigger roles in the society. We want a situation where in your boards, boards of directors, you have two, three characters below the age of 35. So that when decisions are being made about the company, and you are saying that the youth are important, they are part of the decision-making process. Namwamba said he had been tasked to find numerous ways to deal with youth unemployment, promising to work harder to deal with the menace. This ministry, in the overall architecture of government, will be available to work with KEPSA and this whole private sector space to drive this program. Dusamo Kami for Prime Edition. Now, online purchases account for less than 2% of total retail sales and e-businesses are uh, being advised to leverage on the festive season shopping rush to establish consumer trust. Jumia CEO Juan Seco believes value-added experiences through seamless transaction and prompt delivery are a top priority for most online shoppers. Kenya has the third largest e-commerce market in Africa, after South Africa and Nigeria. However, compared to the US and China, where e-commerce sales stands at 15% and 25% respectively, Kenya's e-commerce transaction still remains dismal. We've been very cognizant of you know, the situation, uh, the economic reality right now, right? The inflation, the fuel prices, you know, the dollar shortage for some of our vendors. Jumia CEO Juan Seco says this low turnout may be as a result of high delivery costs, which he says could be remedied through subscriptions and discounts to woo in customers. In addition, he says the belief that online platforms are only meant for electronic gadgets is negatively impacting the sale of other consumer goods, especially perishables such as food delivery and on-demand vegetables. As the supply chains have improved versus last year, people are going back to buying you know, electronics a lot because they see now that those prices are 
making more sense or they see that stock available on the platform, so they go for it. So now we're really covering a 360. Mm, actually, uh, our target is huge because we're providing a very super, uh, super uh, offer in this time around. They note that online sales have been at an all-time low this year, despite the economic turnaround due to constraints in the global supply chain. Speaking during the launch of Jumia's Black Friday, Seco projected that the coming few weeks could provide a turnaround for e-commerce platforms due to the festive times, which is the peak season for the sector. It's, it's a normal, I think, evolution of people feeling comfortable to buy online. As, we, as, you know, as people shop online one time, two times, they'll become more comfortable with it and it becomes part of their, their natural habits. Hibak Said for Prime Edition. Now, high cost of food items and electricity pushed up the rate of inflation to a 65-month high of 9.6% this month. This is according to the latest data from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, which indicates that prices of Irish potatoes, sugar, sukuma wiki, beans and fruits rose at a higher rate to offset decreases in the price of fuel, maize flour, cooking oil and tomatoes. Kenyan households will continue to dig deeper in their pockets as the cost of living continues to surge. According to the latest data from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, the rate of inflation has risen to a 65-month high of 9.6% driven by increases in prices of food and electricity. This is the eighth consecutive rise in the rate of inflation. Last month, the rate of inflation stood at 9.2%, while in August, it was at 8.5%. This month's inflation is nearing one recorded in May 2017, when biting drought pushed up the rate of inflation to 10.7%. KNBS data shows the cost of Irish potatoes and sugar rose the highest at 12.5% and 12% respectively over the last one month, further squeezing the pockets of Kenyans. There was also notable increases in the price of sukuma wiki, mangoes and electricity which went up by 3.8%, 5.3% and 1.8% respectively. The price of 50 kilowatts electricity units during the period went up by 2.4% while Kenyans purchasing more than 200 kilowatts paid more by 1.8%. The KNBS data indicates that there were marginal commodity price reduction for products such as maize flour at 1.7 percent cooking oil at 3.5 percent and carrot 2.5 percent the price of matato fare taxi fare among others increased marginally despite the price of a liter of super petrol and diesel reducing by a shilling Last but not least, the Ministry of Cooperatives and MSME's development will move to tame mismanagement in savings and credit cooperative societies, as well as work with multinationals to build the capacity of small businesses. Cooperatives and MSME's development cabinet secretary, Simon Chalugui, says his ministry will focus on ensuring operationalization of the Hustlers Fund and streamlining the cooperative movement. Speaking during the handing over of the cooperatives and MSMEs docket, I would like to hand over the documents around the SME development to the CS for cooperatives and MSMEs development, Simon Chelegui. The new CS committed to tackling mismanagement, which has bedeviled the cooperative development. The intention of setting up a circle is to support members. And if their liquidity or governance go, goes down, then it's not able to offer the right, the requisite uh, services. He further vowed to expedite cases related to circle fraud. We will continue to register other circles, but they must comply with certain eligibility requirements, which is continuously checked by the regulator, SASFA. On MSMEs, Chelugui announced four products within the ASLA fund to be operational by 1st December 2022 that will complement affirmative funds even as the docket moves from the trade ministry docket. So we are not taking over the role of these affirmative funds. We are just com uh, intervening in a bigger way. And this fund is not about women, youth or, uh, or uh, any other special <laughs> need group. It is targeting everybody 
who is have, who has an idea or who is doing business to further prop up msmes chelugui pledged to liaise with the private sector to build the capacity of small businesses in readiness for the rollout of the hustlers fund all that will require training and we'll be appealing to the big corporates uh, and alongside other partners who may want to support us to help train our small and micro enterprises Good afternoon. Yeah. Meanwhile, Labor and Social Protection Cabinet Secretary Florence Bore has pledged to sort out issues Kenyans in the Gulf region have been facing. As I take over, my priority agenda will be to sort out the issues on the plight of Kenyans in the Gulf region. NSSF would like to recruit as many workers in the informal economy to start saving through the Harbour Harbour. Uh, product. Bore, who took charge of the Labour Ministry from Chelugui, promised to lobby for more funding for social protection, mainly targeting the elderly and persons with disabilities. I pledge to lobby the National Assembly and the National Treasury to ensure that more funds are allocated for social protection intervention so that we can have more Kenyans, especially older persons, persons with disabilities, to benefit from these government transfers. Well, that story brings to a close business news for tonight. But you can find more stories on our website at kbc.co.ke. My name is Wairimu Jenga. Have a good night. In the second Well, of course, good evening and thank you for joining us for KBC Sports Update with me, Richard Munga. As you saw there, a couple of days to the 2022 uh, World Cup Tournament in Qatar. And among the first games that we are going to be bringing you live on KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner, obviously we're going to be having the Qatar versus Ecuador match. That is on 20th November. That is at 7 p.m. We have a couple of good group stage matches in the first week. We also have African champion Senegal uh, facing off against Netherlands. You have France versus Australia. Of course, France looking to defend their world title you have belgium canada switzerland cameroon and of course portugal ghana also another big match so stay tuned in to kbc for more sports updates of course world cup and all the fixtures out of the 28 matches that we are going to be bringing it, bringing to you live and of course the other matches out of the 64 that we are going to be bringing to you uh, through our radio stations well that is for later but for now on to a top story tonight whereby Ulinzi Swords women's team from Nairobi won the Super League category in the Governor's Cup netball tournament held at Lions High School, Kisumu. The Swords won all five games played, earning themselves 10 points. Kendu Bay Starlets came second with eight points, while Sophia Queens took the third position. In the secondary school category, Nyakach Girls Junior Team, Kobala Secondary, and Kimo Song Secondary Schools tied for the first position sharing eight points. Nyakach Girls Senior Team won in Division 1 after aging out all five teams. Seven teams participated in the mains category with Ganex team taking the win with 12 points while Homer Bay Seniors were second with 10 points and Kenyatta University came third with eight points. Oko Primary was the winner in the primary school category with four points. 
The governor's cup will hold its next series in Bungoma late in November this year. Nora Mwangi for Prime Edition. On to other matters, Duran Shah was crowned the overall winner of the Chairman's Prize Golf Tournament after garnering that seven points at the Muzaiga Golf Club. Ndiga Githai won the men's title when Eva Njokia won the, lady, the ladies' category. Sami Nganga and Rose Jane Gitari were the runners-up. On Sunday, there was a junior tournament and a caddies and staff tournament, which was organized early in the month. The three-day event attracted 250 golfers daily and was organized to celebrate outgoing chairman Ronald Meru, who has held the position for the last two years. Also, former Black Stars captain John Mensah has urged the Ghanaian team to prioritize teamwork in order to attain their goals at the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Ghana lost 3-0 to Brazil before beating bottom rank Nicaragua 1-0 during the international break. The World Cup finals will exclusively be televised live on KBC Channel 1 and on our radios beginning on the 20th of November through to the 18th of December 2022. World Cup, Eco Cape. Black Stars captain John Mensa has urged Ghanaian team to prioritize teamwork in order to attain their goals at the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. The former Sunderland player said the team could achieve the country's target if they stick together. He also advised the team to treat the opening game with optimum importance because it will set a tone for the tournament. During the international break, Ghana lost 3-0 to Brazil before beating bottom-ranked Nicaragua 1-0. Zambo Borbon and Zvian Kovadia. A chance and look at that goal for Tawi Sawaku. Goal! In Qatar, Ghana is in Group H alongside Portugal, South Korea and Uruguay. They'll begin their campaign against Portugal on 24th of November, followed by South Korea on 28th of November, and conclude their group matches against Uruguay on the 2nd of December. Neil. Odegaard joining the attack. Martinelli holds it up. Now sends the ball over. Jesus, time to bring it down. Here's Odegaard. Still got it for Arsenal. Lots of tricks in there. England begins the World Cup campaign in Qatar in less than a month, with Ghana's number seven in contention to start their opening game against Iran, if fit. Meanwhile, Varendia striker Edison Cavani is said to be fit to join up with the Uruguay squad for 2022 World Cup despite an injury scare. The 35-year-old striker was forced off after just 18 minutes in lost chase 1-0, La Liga defeat at home to Barcelona. The World Cup finals will be exclusively televised live on KBC Channel 1 and all KBC's radio stations beginning on 20th of November through to 18th of December 2022. World Cup, Eco KBC. King Orimwangi for Channel 1 Sports. Follow is World Cup, Eco KBC, as we bring you the matches from the 20th of November, which is next month uh, literally starts tomorrow until the 18th of December. On to other matters, the Los Angeles Lakers finally on their first win of the new NBA season as LeBron James led them to a 121-110 victory against the Denver Nuggets. LeBron James scored 26 points and Anthony Davis added 23 points for the Lakers to end their five-game losing start. Last Russell Westbrook came off the bench to add 18 points 